Hi, my name is AJ, and I cannot be trusted with valves. I don't know how many of these I've gotten on film, but I've done this at least four times in the last day. <laughs> Amazing. All right, Scott, we have some decisions to make. These are all the colors of carabiners in order of sales, from this side to that side, my left to your right. This one is just sad. <laughs> so, okay, no, no, no. So we have the stone washed, and then it went orange, velocity blue, frosted purple, kawaii green, lemon peel yellow, southwest blue, astatic red, lada, lada, teal, army green, manta green, and then this one is standing in for pink. Oh. And pink is by far the one we sold the least of. It was basically these three were all in a lump. And four. These th those four were all in a lump. These three were kind of in a lump. And then these ones were all way out ahead. I'm, I'm kind of sad this one is so low. I know. But it was also super hard to powder coat. Yeah, it's my second favorite after orange. I vote we get rid of manta green. I vote we get rid of red. I mean, I don't need any of these personally. I'm fine with that. No, I feel like we need more than seven colors. We get rid of pink. Or change pinks. I mean, six is already a lot. Are we not doing stretch goals anymore? I guess we are doing stretch goals where we can add more colors. Or, this is actually seven. So this would give us... Is this one actually frosted? No, that's not. That's just a stone wash. Okay. So that would give us 49 different color combinations plus screw colors. So even if we just have two screw colors, we're at like... Basically, a hundred combinations. If we have four screw colors, we're at like two hundred combinations. I thought we were. I mean, it's a lot of screws, but I kind of figured we would do a color for every screw, every color for all the screws. I don't think we can do that. I think we have to be more picky about screw colors. Okay. Well, the nice thing about these colors is these were the original better. Key well, except for that guy. These and that one. <laughs> these five were the original better keychain colors, and they're all designed to work together. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously some combinations are better than others, but no combination looks hideous. Do we want to add in black or white? I don't know. Did anyone ask for that last time? No, they didn't win the votes, but we already have black powder coat. Um, um, I'm fine with leaving it here. Yeah, I say we don't do it unless it like gets voted in or we have a billion requests for it. Okay. Is it, If you could add any color... Would you add any colors? I need a color wheel. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't love this, but... I hate the red so much. <laughs> it kind of fills it out is all. I don't know if people will buy red. The red doesn't have complimentary colors here. Like, you can do Christmas. Which is literally complimentary. I know. You could do it with the orange, but it would look terrible. You could do it with the yellow, and it would be meh. You could do it with the green, and you have Christmas. You could do the red and the blue, and... No, it's not bad. It wouldn't, wouldn't be bad. Red and purple is awful. I hate it. That's red and the bad. other blue... I just hate red. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst orange. <laughs> it is the worst orange, but it's possible people will like it. People, people who did red would probably do red on red. Yeah, it just fills out our rainbow. I'm not, like, super attached to it. Ooh. Roy G. This is not indigo. The more we talk, the more I realize I don't know what indigo looks like. It's a purpley blue. <laughs> Maybe you need teal. I actually don't hate the teal, but like we have so many in this color family. Yeah, there's t too many blues. We people can vote them in. <laughs> <laughs> we could add a hot pink because people like, really did not like the like magenta ugly pink that we had. Sure. And I assume we don't want to do any of the super fancy mixed colors for the Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know if we even... I, I'm i not against it in principle, but I think the problem is we would have to do a lot of experiments. Yeah. We'll save those for special and editions. And recipes. And we would have to figure out recipes. So that when we did another batch, they were <laughs> repeatable. Close. We'll save those for special editions. Or like a whole Kickstarter <laughs> of special colors. We could let people choose. What no, that would be awful. That would be the worst. If they could make their own color mixes. Oh, that would be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> if we had to change the powder coating for every single carabiner, it will be $100 per carabiner. Also, I would just hate my life the whole time. <laughs> I can't believe it's not more than $100. I mean, changing powder doesn't take that long. It would just be a pain to do it a million times.
Yeah, but then you can't do other ones while you're doing that one. Oh, that's true, because each carabiner would then have... Well... It's just timing. Like, you couldn't time it right, the heat. Yeah. If you had multiple racks and multiple ovens, maybe. It would be the worst. Yes. It would take... Like, if we sold a thousand carabiners, it would take us, like, five years to fulfill. The only... I just dislike... <laughs> visually, not... Not like sales wise, I don't like this because there's so many blues over here. Green is in its own realm. That this is super unbalanced, like this. Mm, yeah, I don't care. I don't know. Why does that matter what the color wheel looks like? Our whole point is to mix color or to let people mix colors. And if we throw in a color that looks terrible when you mix it with anything, I mean, we just do less of it. Do we allow people to make stupid choices? <laughs> I mean, if we're not, we need to do less colors. No, but all these colors look not terrible together. Scott disagrees. <laughs> but I don't know if we can ever, like, we're going to have to not show it like this. That's it fine. It drives me crazy. What if we, yeah, randomized it. This is not random, but thanks. <laughs> it's random enough. Scott plays with colors. Yeah, I don't think we want it too orderly in the pictures anyway, because our goal isn't to convey, look, nice, convenient rainbow. The goal is, look at all the colors. And it'll look like colors if they're in orders that don't make sense. It'll look like garbage if, it, <laughs> if you put it random. Well, don't do it random, but don't do it in rainbow. Yeah, it can be orderly and not in a rainbow. Yeah, but if we do it rainbow, then we just offer rainbow carabiners. If we do it in an order that makes sense that is not a rainbow, then we have a billion different colors. I'm just saying if we don't include red, we can pretty much not, we pretty much can't put them in order. If visually. we don't include red, we can't put them in order. Yeah, we need to include put red in, to put them in order. We can't put them in rainbow order. It doesn't look I don't good. want rainbow order. I don't want to be the rainbow company or the colors company, not the rainbow company. Yeah, but, okay, whatever. I like rainbows. So red or no red, final decision. I guess no red unless it's voted in. And then, yeah, we'll let people vote in. Okay, so our colors are... Titanium. Titanium, yeah. I was going to call it Stonewash, but now it is Casper Clear on Stonewash. Southwest Blue, Kawhi Green, Orange, Frosted Purple, Lemon Peel Yellow, and Velocity Blue. Didn't we order more powder coat colors? We never actually ordered we them. We never actually ordered them. Should we say the colors might change slightly? The colors might change slightly, but they will be in the spirit of the same colors. You know, technically we have the option of going to gloss colors too and getting rid of the clear coat. It would make powder coating a little bit easier, but I don't think it looks pretty. I think, this I one think looks, it cheapens them. I think this one looks good. Yeah, you can't do the, the clear coat on the uh, mixed colors because it kind of mixes them all into one color and it would just become creamsicle or whatever that color is i mean i like i'd be fine with that but well the whole point of the mixed colors is you can see the speckles i have some fantastic news we just got our first wholesale order of carabiners now wholesale sales is one of those things that i have been wanting to expand and grow and by expand i mean basically get started there's been almost no wholesale to this point and i think it's a big part of the future of Design the Everything. It only takes one or two wholesale sales per week to meet our expenses, but it takes like a billion individual orders. So there is a lot of advantage in selling wholesale. Obviously these sales are at a reduced margin, but that's okay as most of our costs are time costs, not material costs. And right now our production capacity is not booked. Plus we've always planned on wholesale sales and we price things accordingly. The problem is they ordered 20 stonewashed carabiners and we have this one. We have exactly one. So we actually need to spin the machine back up for the first time since the Kickstarter to machine some stonewashed carabiners. There's a couple steps in this process. Let's start at the beginning. The first step is to prep our laser cut blanks. They come to me like this from Send Cut Send. Out of the bag, they are 90% of the way ready to go into the machine, but there's a couple little pre-processing steps we need to do. First of all, there are some very small little tabs on here. Those will damage the sides of our fixture. So we just need to grind those off on the belt grinder. These are all done, and the next step is to send them into the tumbler. Now, the reason 
we put them in the tumbler is that there are some sharp edges left from the laser cutting and those sharp edges much like the tabs can damage my aluminum fixture titanium is harder than aluminum so it has a tendency to want to eat into the fixture whenever it gets a chance so tumbling those off will just kind of round off the corners a little bit knock off some burrs and that'll extend the life of my fixture these will tumble for about two hours and then they'll be ready to go in the machine That being said, this will hopefully be one of the last times that I run parts in this fixture. I have a bunch of ideas on how I can improve the process going forwards and that'll need a new fixture. My plan is to get those redesigns done in the next week or two so that we can prove out the process during the campaign and then we can hit the ground running when it's ready for production. I have one carabiner loaded up in there. We'll test that one by itself. And if that works, we'll move on to the rest of them. I just tweaked my cam settings to work with the new tooling that I'm using on this one, the same ones I'm gonna be using on the other carabiner. And oh my gosh, I underestimated how much time it was going to add to the production process. I remember why I use that other tool now. I'm going from two hours per pallet to eight hours per pallet, which is a little bit painful, but I have to remember that this mill sits idle most of the time. So really that's not adding any extra cost for me. And it will remove all the sandblasting that I have to do. So even though the mill will be running longer, I will be doing less work. I am a little bit worried about tool life. We'll see how long these tools hold up. I'm, I'm not convinced that it's gonna make it through a whole pallet, but we'll find out. Our carabiner came out. Nothing's broken. I have noticed that pocket get loose over time. I probably need to recut this fixture, especially now that I'm not using the UV resin. So I'm gonna try the same thing again, except putting the carabiner in a different pocket. The other pockets are tighter because they don't get used as much as that first pocket that I use for a lot of this validation stuff. So I think it'll be fine. This pocket is now out of the code, that worn out one, we're not gonna use that pocket anymore. Now we're gonna use that pocket and hopefully we won't have those same pullout issues. And with that running, that brings us back to computer work in the office with Scott. That's Scott. Hey Scott, what are you working on? I'm organizing our digital files and then I'm going to be editing our Kickstarter graphics. While Scott is doing that, I'm going to do updates to our previous Kickstarter backers so they know about the campaign. I'm going to do a YouTube update and I'm going to do a YouTube community post, which I've never done before. I'm dumb. I did a dumb. I thought the tool was broken because the machine was quiet and because the coolant was voracious. And... Yes, voracious. And the tool is not broken. The tool is in fact still there and I have stopped the machine prematurely. So I guess I have to restart it? That was an oopsie. Actually, never mind. We need to adjust the work offset anyway. It's like I went the wrong way last time. So this carabiner would have been lost anyway. There you go. You see how off center that is? Probably not, but trust me, it is. I just offset the fixture the wrong way, which you think I would get right considering I have written explicitly here on the machine how to do it, but somehow I still move it the wrong way half the time. Third tries the charm. This one came out great. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the other ones and run the whole palette. 